Today we're going to talk about something called events inside JavaScript. And the basic idea behind events is that we can do something to an HTML element and in response to that, a piece of JavaScript code is going to run and, and do something inside the website. So a couple of examples of events is let's actually go ahead and take this example I have right here. I have a navigation and I have a div box inside the navigation, just a small box. Now, what if I want this navigation to close as soon as I click the div inside the navigation? Well, we have an event called uh, unclick, which basically means that once I click on this div, then the navigation needs to behave a certain way. We also have hover or unhover, which basically means that I'm going to hover my cursor on top of this element, and then the navigation is going to close. We can also say unload, which means that the element needs to load, and then it's going to do something. So we have a lot of different types of events, and there's so many of them that I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to show you guys a few examples in this episode. But there's so many of them that I recommend you guys Google you know, all the different types of events you have in JavaScript because there's so many of them. So to give you guys an example, let's actually go ahead and create an event. So right now I have this navigation and I did actually link to a style sheet and start this navigation. You guys can see it right here if you're curious to how it looks like. I have very basic nav styling up here. You guys can pause the screen if you want to copy this down. And I have a nav div styling down here. So basically the div inside the navigation. Now, this is how it looks like. You know, we have a very basic black box on the side here that's 300 pixels wide. And I have a red box inside of it. And I want to do something to this navigation once I click this red box. As you guys can hear right now, it doesn't do anything. So we want to create an event on this red box. Now the way we're going to do that is first of all, we're going to go ahead and create a script tag right at the bottom of, of our document, right on top of the body tag, or at least the closing of the body tag. We're going to write scripts. We don't need that. And inside this script tag, we're going to create a function. This function is going to be written out like this. We're going to write function, then we're going to give it a name. And in this case, we're going to call it toggle nav, just to have a name for it. Toggle nav with a big N. Parentheses, curly brackets. So inside the curly brackets is where we're going to put our JavaScript code, you know, whatever we want to do once something happens to this div. So first of all, let's actually just go ahead and test this. So I'm going to write alert, parentheses, semicolon, and we're going to go ahead and say that it should alert, it works. It works. Let's actually write that correctly. There we go. Now, what it basically does is that it gives us a small, you know, window that says it works if this actually works. So once we've done this, and remember, the function is not going to run until we've actually called on it because the code is inside a function. So this is not going to run as soon as I refresh the page. It's only going to run once I actually call on it. So what we need to do now is create an event because right now, as you guys can see, I refresh the site, nothing happens. I'm going to go ahead and go inside my body tag, for example, and create an event called unload. I'm going to say unload. And the basic idea here is that once the body has loaded, it's going to run some kind of code. And I can actually tell it that I want it to run toggle nav, the function we have down here. Make sure you include the parentheses, save it. And as soon as I refresh the browser, you guys can see it says it works. So we just created an event. We told it to wait till this entire body had loaded to run this function here. Now, before we continue, I want to point out that unload only works inside specific HTML elements. For example, the body tag, it would actually work inside out because we just tested it. Uh, if I were to put it inside a image tag, that would also work. Inside a script tag would also work. But if I were to put it inside a div tag, like the one I have down here, it's not going to work. So it's only specific elements that you can put it inside of. And if you want to know more about which specific element, you can go ahead and Google it. That's usually the way I do it. So I just want to point that out before we continue. Now, the next thing we're going to learn about at, at least the next event is the one called on mouse over. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this event up here. And we're going to go ahead and go down to our div tag. And then we're going to say on mouse over equal to double quotes. And then we're going to go ahead and run this function down here. So if I want to go back to the website, refresh, you guys can see I have the mouse cursor right here. As soon as I hover the cursor on top of our div over here, it says it works. 
I didn't click it, I just simply took my mouse cursor and hovered it on top of it. And we can do that multiple times, so uh, I can just go ahead and say okay and I can do it again. Uh, we also have one called on mouse out. So if I were to say instead of over, we can say out. I go back, refresh. As you guys can see, I go inside the box, nothing happens. When I take it off, something happens. So we have specific events and certain behaviors that needs to happen on certain, you know, moments. Uh, my favorite one is the one called unclick because that's the most used one, uh, I think. So if I go ahead and go in and say unclick, save it, refresh, you guys can see that nothing happens when I put my mouse cursor inside the square. But if I were to click it, something happens, okay? So this is the one I wanna to use to make this small interactive navigation here that I want to show you guys in this episode. So to show you guys a real life example of using this, let's say we have this toggle nav down here. Once I click on this div, I want the navigation box to go out to the side and disappear out from the left side of the monitor, okay? So we want to close the nav to the left side. So what we can do now is I can go in and see my styling, which says that right now my navigation has a position as fixed and it has zero pixels from the left. So what I could do is I could change the styling of this navigation to have a minus 300 pixel to the left. So because the width is 300, it's gonna go 300 to the left and disappear. Now do also bear in mind that I have a transition effect, which means that uh, when I move it, it's, it's kind of the same as a hover effect. If you have a transition effect, it's gonna do it, um, even though it's JavaScript. So if I were to go back to my code, go down to where we have our token lab function, where we say it works, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the alert. I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a document. And inside this document, we want to get an element by ID. So I'm gonna say get element by ID. And do bear in mind that I did actually use capitalized letters inside the function here. You guys can see we have capitalized E, we have capitalized B and I. So because this is a function, I'm gonna write parentheses, semicolon. And inside this function, I wanna say we have some kind of ID inside this document here. And we're gonna call this one close nav, I guess. We don't actually have the ID yet, but we're gonna go ahead and create it right now. So inside the nav tag of our HTML tag up here, I'm gonna say space ID equal to double quotes on click. Oh, sorry, close nav, not on click. Uh, so right now we say, okay, once we click on this div that has this on click function in it, we want to go in and get the element by ID called close nav, which is this one, and do something to it. And the way we do that is by writing after the function down here, get element by ID, we write punctuation, which means that we're gonna go ahead and do something else. And we're gonna go ahead and write style, which is a thing you can do inside JavaScript where we basically change the styling of this element. Now you can do it in multiple ways. We, you can just style one thing inside the CSS or you can style a lot of things. And the way we're doing it right now, we can only style one thing, which we only need to do, but I'll make sure to make a separate episode where we talk about different styling methods we have inside JavaScript. So for now, we're just gonna focus on doing one thing. So after the style tag, we're gonna go ahead and write dot. And that basically means we're jumping to the next thing. So we say we wanna style something. What do we want to style? And we want to style the left styling inside this ID or inside this nav uh, tag we have up here. So after we write left, I'm gonna say space equal to space double quotes. And inside the double quotes, I'm gonna go ahead and write whatever I want the left to you know change to after we click on it. So in this case, I want to say, or was it minus 300 pixels? Now do also bear in mind it jumps down to the next line because I have no more space on the side here, doesn't matter. And now if I were to go back into the website, refresh, you guys can see once I click it, it moves out to the side. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and make a function where it actually opens and closes it depending on what status it's, it's in right now. So what we can do is I can go ahead and say, well, right now it only closes it. But what if I want to open it as well once I click on the box again? Now what we can do is inside the script tag on top of the function, 
we can create a variable. We're going to call this one, let's say, nav status. Status. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and set equal to true. Because if it's equal to true, then we have a Boolean going on here. We have true and we have false. And right now I want the status to be true because we do have it open. Once I close it, I want to change the nav status to false. And depending on what the current status is, I want it to either run this line of code, or I want it to run another line of code, okay? So right now the nav status is equal to true and it's outside the function, which means that this code is always gonna be running inside the browser, okay? If I go inside the function, we can make an if statement, which we haven't talked about yet, I think, but we will talk about it. It basically means that if this condition is true, then do this. You write that by writing if space parentheses curly brackets. And then we're going to say, okay, if whatever's inside the parentheses are true, then run this code inside the curly brackets. So we can say, okay, if nav status is equal to true, then do this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line of code, delete it and put it inside the if statement, which again, right now should do pretty much the same thing as we have going on right now inside the browser. It does the exact same thing. Now, what we can add to it is underneath the document get element by ID, blah, blah, blah. We can say, okay, after it has done this styling to our nav, we can actually go ahead and change the nav status variable to false. So now it's gonna be equal to false which means that once we click on it, it's also gonna change the variable condition up here. So right now, if I were to go and copy this entire piece of code here, paste it underneath here, and change the if status to else if, which basically means that if this is true, do this, else if this is true, do this, okay? Again, we haven't talked about it, but you can just go ahead and follow it if you wanna learn how to make this closing navigation. So you can actually see what we can do with JavaScript. So once we have this, we need to change the nav status because right now we did actually say, okay, nav status is equal to true. Once we click on the button, it's gonna change it to false. So now we need to tell it that, okay, if nav status is equal to false, it needs to run this piece of code and need to change the nav status back to true, okay? So now what we wanna do is we want to change the left styling to zero if the nav status is equal to false and we click on the button. So we're basically changing the styling back to what we had up here. What we had left is equal to zero. So just changing it back and forward constantly. So if we go back and refresh the website, I click it, you guys can see it closes. Now if I click it again, it opens. Close, open, close, open. Okay, pretty cool. So that's one of the basic functions behind these events. And again, I just showed you guys a very, very basic example of creating a open close navigation, which is kind of a cool feature if you want to have that inside a website. But we did talk about a few things in here that we haven't actually talked about yet, like the if and else if statements here. Uh, we will talk about them pretty soon because you will be using them quite often in JavaScript. But for now, this is all I want to teach you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.